Hi everyone, it's Jelena from Wiggle Yum, and today I will show you how to make a delicious challah bread. And you will also see just how easy it is to braid a six strand challah. So let's get started, let's make some bread. Start by adding three and a half cups or 500 grams of all-purpose flour into a medium-sized bowl. Next, add one teaspoon or eight grams of kosher salt, whisk it through, and then add one and a half a teaspoon or seven grams of quick rice instant yeast. I love using instant yeast since you can just add it to your dry ingredients without having to proof it, like you would need to proof the active dry or fresh yeast. So mix it all together. And now we will add one third cup or 70 grams of white sugar. And you can definitely replace the sugar with about 60 grams of honey if you prefer. Mix this all through and set aside. Now we will combine our wet ingredients and we will start by cracking three large eggs into a large bowl. I am weighing the eggs just because the sizes do vary all over the world, so just make sure that you have about 135 grams of eggs or so. Whisk to break them up. And now we will add a quarter cup or 60 grams of oil. I am using sunflower oil, but you can also use olive oil since it is commonly used in challah bread. Oops, 63 grams, that one. Now we will add the water and just make sure that your water is not too hot so that it doesn't kill the yeast. So anywhere from 95 to 115 degrees Fahrenheit is okay. So we'll add uh, half a cup plus two tablespoons or 150 grams of water. And challah is never made with milk since dairy would not be kosher to eat with all meals. So you would always use water for challah. So mix it all through. And now it's time to combine the ingredients. And this is a pretty straightforward process. Just keep adding the flour into the wet ingredients using a whisk or a spatula later when the dough becomes um, firmer. Take the dough out onto your counter and we will have to knead this dough for about 8 to 12 minutes. You can also just use a stand mixer if you have one and let the mixer knead this on low for about 10 to 12 minutes but we are doing it by hand now. So just incorporate all of the flour that was added and keep kneading. If the dough does end up sticking like this to your hands just scrape it off and incorporate it back into the dough. You don't need to wash your hands in between. What we're doing here is we're developing the gluten bonds and you can test it by pressing the finger like this into the dough and if the dough doesn't bounce back quickly, it's not quite ready. So continue re kneading some more until the dough bounces back really fast. There, like this. So the dough is ready here and uh, we will let it rest after this. So we'll prepare a bowl with oil. Just spread the oil all over the bowl and we'll place our dough into the bowl and then we'll cover this with uh, plastic wrap, just making sure that we create a seal, tight seal around. And we'll let the dough proof in the oven with just a light on, the oven is not on. Or any draft free space for about hour and a half to two hours. After almost two hours, the dough is ready to be divided into pieces for the strands. So we'll start by weighing out the entire amount of dough and then dividing it into equal pieces. So here my dough was 914 grams, so I needed them to be 152.3 grams to get six, so around 150-ish it will be. You don't have to weigh them like this, but um, if you do weigh them, this will give you even strands in your bread, so when you braid it, it will look nice. So just weigh them all out until you get four or six strands, depending on how many you would like. Once we're done portioning them out, we'll shape them into rounds and then into, into like ovals. So do this whichever way is easiest for you, as long as you make them into buns. So whether you roll them or 
pinch them together. You can just leave them also in the round shape, that's fine too. We just definitely have to let them rest after this. So now that we're done, we will cover them with a clean cloth and we will let them rest anywhere from 10 to 20 minutes. So about 15-ish minutes later, it's time to start making our strands. And what you can do is you can now simply just start rolling it out like this. That's a very common way to do it, to do elongated dough. But I personally don't like when I do it like this, how the dough breaks up like this. And it's kind of even more pronounced once the, once the braid proves. So we will do it the longer way, but it will give you much nicer smooth strands that will keep the shape nicely. So add just a little bit of oil on the counter so the dough kind of sticks. And now using a rolling pin, we will just stretch out and thin out the dough. You can use any type of rolling pin you prefer or have, as long as you can stretch the dough out. And then we will just roll it like this very lightly. The dough kind of sticks to itself. You don't have to press too hard. And then using your fingers and the palm of your hands, you will just roll it out, tape, making sure that you taper them at the ends. And that's it. You will continue doing this for all six strands. kind of pinch it here like you see if it kind of opens up but don't worry they do not open up once they're proofed and here I wanted to show you that the pen that I'm using is 17 inches long so I'm trying to make my strands about 18 inches because they do shrink as they're sitting and you will see right away see how I elongate it and I'm having here so my um, ruler is 17 inches so it's 18 inches and it's already shrinking so anyways, right before you're about to braid them, you just roll them up one more time. So now we will bring all of the six strands together and we will kind of stick them at the top like this. You can press a little bit more if you want, but mainly stick them. So now the left outer strand goes to the right and the right outer strand goes to the left. Separate the fours into twos. And then the outer right strand goes in the middle. And now it's simple from here. Left goes to the right, left goes to the middle. The right strand goes to the left, the right strand goes to the middle. And then again, the left strand goes to the right, the left strand goes to the middle, the right strand goes to the left, the right strand goes to the middle. So it's very straightforward process. I left it almost the same speed as I did braided so that you can follow along. But once you learn the pattern, you will remember it and it will be easy to do. So now we're nearing the end and we will run out of dough. And when that happens, at the end, we will just uh, squeeze it together like this and then tuck it all underneath. And you will do that on top as well. You can also taper the ends and then tuck them underneath. As long as you tuck underneath, that's what's most important so that your braid keeps the shape. And we'll now place it onto our um, baking tray. And we'll now make an egg wash using one egg and one tablespoon of water. You need to apply the egg wash now as well as later so that the egg wash can go on easily since the dough will later puff up and you won't be able to apply egg wash into all of the little 
corners. So make sure to get into those corners while the dough is still firm. This is a firmer style of dough, so it will need to rise for another about one and a half to two hours. Cover it with the saran wrap and like I said, let it rise for another one and a half to two hours. Just make sure that your place is warm and not drafty. So after about one and a half hours, you will preheat your oven to 350 degrees Fahrenheit or 177 degrees Celsius. And once the oven is ready, you will apply the second coat of egg wash. Just making sure not to press too hard since the dough is now very soft. And our challah will be ready to bake. So this challah... Um, rested for one hour and 45 minutes. And now bake it at 350 degrees Fahrenheit or 177 degrees Celsius for 30 minutes or until the internal temperature reads 190 degrees Fahrenheit or 88 degrees Celsius. And you can test it using a thermometer and as you can see, mine was at 200, so it's definitely baked. Let it cool for about 20 minutes and it's ready to eat. Okay, so this bread has been cooling for about 30 minutes or so. I think it's time to try it. I'm really excited. Look how beautiful loaf we made. And it's baked perfectly in 30 minutes. It's beautiful. Okay, so I'm going to cut this into thick slices because challah bread makes the best, the best French toast. Put a bit of um, maple syrup and some cinnamon. Oh, it's delicious. Oh my goodness. Let's see, let's see. Look at that crumb, look how beautiful that is. Okay, let's see if you like it. Mmm. All I can say is, Jewish people of the world, thank you so much for challah bread. It's so, so good. Make it for your friends and family. They will love it. And if you are really into bread making, you can also check out my brioche bread video. That bread is also delicious. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.